Hello everyone, welcome to the program. Financial inclusion continues to be the strategy for decision makers this year and taking the lead is the Apex Bank. The CBN has conducted a review of its current financial inclusion strategy to identify bottlenecks. But first off, let's look at the current statistics. Statistics show that 58.4% adult Nigerians have access to basic financial services as opposed to the bank's projected 70% by 2020. Well, the bank thinks the current regulatory environment is not flexible enough to accommodate the technologies needed to drive inclusion. Well, next week is its first MPC meeting. It will unveil plans for the year there. But there is one sector that may lead the way in deepening that required inclusion. Many say it was once a sunrise industry that has now come of age. Although it has gone through different forms of consolidation and technology obsolete, it seems to be doing well going by the statistics we have. I'm talking about the telecoms industry. Our focus today is how can the telecoms industry in Nigeria deepen financial inclusion? This is Business Nigeria. Well, governments across countries have taken progressive stands to bring about regulations to allow multiple players in the private and public financial systems with licenses to operate bank-led mobile money solutions. And since 2010, more than 55 countries have made commitments to financial inclusion and more than 30 have either launched or are developing a national strategy. Well, let's discuss the uh, telecom sector. Uh, financial inclusion and joining me to do that in the studio is software consultant Ido Wakinde. Many thanks for your time. Thank you. Yes. Also joining me for Abuj, from Abuja studio is the National President Association of Telecoms Companies of Nigeria, Olushola Teniola. Many thanks uh, for joining me on Business Nigeria, you both. But first off, let me let me feel the polls of Nigerians. They are the ones these services have been for. Let's feel their pause. Let's see how they are feeling with the service providers. The way they are doing these days, it's not as how they are doing before. Now, the tariff that they are taking from the from, from my is very cheap. Sometimes the network is not always good, well, especially when you have um, urgent things you really need to do. It is at that time that um, the network will not be good. And apart from that, you know, there are some areas that you don't have um, good coverage. It's been good, but it could be better. There are still some things that I thought by now they should overcome. For instance, you talk on the phone, before you know it, it goes off. And you can't hear the other side again. You have to cut up and top up again. And secondly, sometimes too, they give you charges you don't know how they came about. Then the issue of spam, I don't know what you call it, unsolicited text messages, is getting too rampant. And they have a way of trying to circumvent the rules. So they could do a lot more. And then their coverage is not as extensive as you would think. Sometimes we take the, so we subscribe to the major network because we thought or we think they are well spread across the country to the villages. But recently we went for the Christmas holidays and to my surprise, so many villages, call it villages, really, there are townships now, outside Lagos, coverage is very, very poor. Their yeah, network at times, the way they, de they deduct um, the airtime, share you get, and there are packages. Their packages are not that okay. The only thing I don't like about them is their data. Their data, their calls, everything is okay. Even their browsing, their browsing is very okay, it's lovely. But my, um, their data, they don't give much data. Sometimes network problem, but still, I still manage it. I cannot expect 100% from them, but still, I still look up onto them. Their charges is high, and most of the time I get frustrated, you know? Anytime I, I recharge, then you discover that the level of their um, charging became so high, then sometimes I will be giving up. But just because of the love I have with the network, so I continue using the line. I think I've tried almost all the networks. Uh, MTN, I've not used, I don't use it to browse, but I use it to make calls. But the network, sometimes you call, another person will be speaking another language somewhere. All right, uh, guys, we've heard the voice of the people. Let me start with you, um, Ido. Yes, 
it seems that the, the telecoms industry, the ICT industry has fared well in the past year. We, we could see the subscriber base increasing, mm -hmm. tele density improving. Also, we surpassed the broadband base over 30%. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. What's your take on this generally? Okay, so the, thank you for having me today. Um, the, the numbers at a high level are positive, you know. So like you said, um, those, those, those high level metrics, those macro indicators uh, reflect a positive growth in the last one year and even in the last few years. Um, however, there's still work to do. I wouldn't want the industry or us to rest on these achievements because there's much more to do. If you, again, like I usually say, um, Lagos is not Nigeria, meaning that uh, let's not take for granted the kinds of uh, services, the quality of service that we enjoy in the cities and assume that everybody uh, um, enjoys that same level of service. So even though we've seen high level increase in the macro indicators, there should be some efforts to equalize the general levels of quality across locations. All right. A lot of loop, loopholes need to be plugged. And you also heard the voice of the people, Mr. Teniola. Yes, let me get your, your take on this. The voice of the people, they talked about drop calls, uh, data. They are not so much enjoying the data they are getting from some of these network providers. Let's talk about the, the broadband infrastructure in Nigeria. In your own view, do you think we've been able to actually... To be honest, have we surpassed that 30% band? Well, well, according to NCC's uh, recent data that they've uh, shared with the media and the public, uh, there is an indication that we've uh, achieved 30.9% uh, penetration based on subscriptions. And remember, subscriptions indicate uh, also machine-to-machine -machine connections and also uh, multiple SIMs. Like the other caller actually indicated, there is a identifiable presence of broadband penetration in parts of Lagos. And you'll probably get that also in Abuja and Potakot. But like one of your uh, persons that you interviewed, they said that when they went to the village, there was hardly any presence of data or coverage. So you can see that the challenge is about penetration, which is population penetration. Uh, we still need to work on that so that we can also count unique broadband sus subscribers as opposed to just subscriptions. However, having said that, uh, there has been a noticeable difference in between where we are coming from since 2012 when the Nigerian broadband plan was written and now there is a considerable dearth of uh, data services being rendered uh, on networks that really, really need to have a lot more investments in capacity so that the services that we would like to have rendered and to make broadband ubiquitous can be realizable. Yes, uh, many telcos are jostling for space to become the new age banks. Now, we see the CBN uh, complaining about the bottlenecks when it comes to financial inclusion. It talks about obsolete technology, uh, fixed fees across all transactions. Now, let's look at financial inclusion deeply. Even banks see that the telecom companies are the deep pockets. They're no longer looking at the crude oil uh, that we used to have, that used to drive the revenue for the economy. But how do you think the telcos can deepen inclusion this year? Um, you have to understand that the basis of any digital economy is founded on the telecom sector. The telecom sector is the most critical industry universally uh, that you will identify in any jurisdiction in any country. So if we take some of the past historics, uh, the actual networks were built to carry 
digital information. Financial transactions are digital. So there is a natural synergy in between what the payment services banks are trying to do and what the telco industry has been doing for a long time now. And it is much more critical now that we have identified that there is a significant growth in mobile penetration, which have, of latest statistics would suggest that we have 165 million active subscribers in Nigeria on its own. And obviously we have a far reduced penetration of fixed line. So our modus of operandis in Nigeria is mobile broadband, mobile transactions. So there is a realization that if we have a financial inclusion of just around 46% or far less than the numbers of those that hold a mobile phone, then to reach those that are unbanked is most likely that they will have a phone. And therefore we can use technology, whether it's 2G technology or 3G, to access these forms of services. And the payment services bank falls under such type of service. Yes, you heard him. Technology still is the bane of what we're talking about and getting the right or adopting the right technology uh, will go a long way to help deepen this inclusion. You are a software person. How do we begin to address the issue of technology and bridging that infrastructural gap? Okay. Um, so I'll pick up from the point where uh, the other gentleman mentioned that um, more than likely, the people who will be identified as unbanked will already have mobile phones because of the deep penetration across geographies of the telecoms sector. Um, the implication of that is that startups, uh, tech companies will then, fintech companies, will then need to study, get intimate with these demographic of customers, understand them intimately, the people in the rural areas, the people who are not banked, but who have mobile phones. Um, so in order, not, in order to create products that are, first of all, that first of all address their need and are a fit for their current lifestyle. So for instance, it will make no sense to build a highly functional mobile app that requires the kind of network quality that you get in Lagos and expect people in the hinterland to use it. So that's what I said, uh, that's what I meant when I said the, the people who build these solutions or, or, or these apps need to be sensitive to understand exactly what the parameters of the, of the situation of these people are in the hinterland. That will enable, so like he said, he mentioned some things around um, whether it's 2G or 3G, meaning if you can't get high, if, you, if, if there is a way to build an app or a website or some financial service uh, that will improve inclusion, but to build it in such a way that it is highly functional on a low latency, low quality network, okay, then that is the way to go. If it's possible to use text messages, you know, uh, which, which we've seen some of some innovations come along that line these days with, with the USSD um, star, blah, 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 the codes, you, know, yeah. you know, the USSD codes. So those kinds of innovations are what people outside these city clusters that we've mentioned can enjoy immediately with their current levels of access. All right, we'd have to take a break at this moment. And when we return, guys, we'll be talking about uh, the company's license to, to build broadband infrastructure and the CBN talking about the regulatory frameworks that uh, is not so flexible to allow these guys uh, to work. We'll talk about that when we return. You're watching Business Nigeria. You're watching Business Nigeria, how telecom companies can deepen financial inclusion has been the topic. I've been speaking with uh, a software consultant, Idowa Kinde, and also uh, the president, Association of Telecoms Company of Nigeria, Olushola Teniola. Yes, from 
statistics that I, I spoke about earlier, 58.4% adults have access to basic financial services at the moment as against the 70% projected uh, by the CBN. Yes, and the CBN says current regulatory environment is not flexible enough to accommodate the technologies needed to drive inclusion. Mr. Teniola, do you think the government should hands off? Well, if you look at the examples of Kenya uh, and the M-Pesa platform I'm referring to, and also look at what's happening in Ghana with what they're doing with mobile money, this is a technology drive that is purely a private sector initiative. Remember, we're talking about a technology now that's about 30, 30 years old. GSM is 30 plus years old. So the permutations and combinations of what we can do with this technology in Nigeria, we're just scratching the surface. And I don't think regulatory or regulation should come in front of technology. It usually is in sync or it, or it follows when there's identified abuse of consumer um, uh, unfair play, for instance. So for the consumer, we're actually not providing them the best that the technology can give to them. And if you look at the rural sector at the moment, where there are about 20 to 30 million Nigerians that have not even had access to a telephone, talk less of those that have access to telephone services and are just using it for basic voice calls. There is a huge opportunity now where we can get them included in banking using mobile technology this is disruptive it changes the narrative and it also introduces increase in gdp and in the way and manner that they can now live their lives by using the device that they have the software is there the hardware is there the know-how is there the intellectual property is there it has been tried and tested in other jurisdiction it's been a success in kenya it's a success in Ghana. I don't see any reason why it shouldn't be this success in Nigeria. Yes, you share the same opinion of what he has said. I do. I do. <laughs> All right, so we should begin to rethink advocacy for regulatory uh, frameworks to be taken off, mm -hmm. uh, technology to thrive mm -hmm. in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. So what's your take? Okay, so, um, so it's, it's, um, it's, it's evident that when we allow you know, uh, free market forces to drive innovation, um, every, everybody will settle themselves, you know, uh, uh, if I may use that phrase. Um, it's, it's also important not to send uh, negative signals to, one, the local innovation communities, the people who have their sights on capturing these markets, the entrepreneurs who have their sites on capturing these, capturing these markets, as well as foreigners who might be um, scanning various locations across the globe for as, as investment destinations. So if they see that these are the kinds of signals that are coming out of Nigeria, it may be a negative decision point for us. All right, like, lastly, guys, yes, the ICT industry was able to attract about uh, 40 billion foreign direct investment into the country as against... 32 billion about three years ago. Do you think we are going to get more of that this year, Mr. Teniola? Well, well, I think that the figures you're referring to uh, since inception, let me add some statistics. Uh, the ICT, where telecoms is a part of, combined, has contributed around $70 billion of investment since the deregulation of this industry since 2001. And that's very sizable. If you think of the fact that we started off with just voice calls, now we also have a huge sector in SMS. We carry financial transactions. We carry over-the-top applications. There are other mission-critical services that run on the back of the same investments. So you can find out that if we want to increase the capacity 
of our economy and we want to grow it, there needs to be further investments. And I believe that with the right conducive environment, driven by proper government policies, and obviously I protect the investments of my members, which represents out of uh, $32 billion out of that $70 billion that I just mentioned. So we need to obviously work collaborative with government to see those areas that will improve our economy, improve the lives of the citizens, and to reach out to the bottom of the pyramid where there are still some people, and Nigerians unfortunately, who have not actually had an experience of making a voice call. In 2019, that's not acceptable. So we not only need to improve broadband to make it ubiquitous, but we also need to reach out to those that have not had the opportunity to make a voice call. All right. Well, that data was just for 2018, $40 billion FDI into the ICT sector. I would have to leave it at that, uh, but we'll continue the conversation on Twitter. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Olushola Teniola, and also Ido Wakinde uh, for welcome. talking to us on Business Nigeria. Appreciate your time. But just before we we'll